Hello everyone, my name is Marjorie Rooney and I'm a second year medical student at Oklahoma State College of Osteopathic Medicine. Today, I will be sharing research conducted by me and my fellow colleagues titled Treatment of Malaria in Pregnancy, a Literature Review of Current Guidelines Across the Globe. We will begin with a brief introduction about malaria in pregnancy. Malaria is a parasitic infection that is transmitted to its human host by the bite of an infected female Anopheles mosquito. If a pregnant female is infected, malaria can also be spread transplacentally. In endemic areas, malaria is estimated to be present in approximately 25% of all pregnancies. Infection with malaria can lead to complications such as maternal anemia, intrauterine growth restriction, premature delivery, delivery of low birth weight newborns, and even fetal death. Despite worldwide efforts to prevent malaria in pregnancy, malaria remains endemic in places like Malawi. In 2023, the USA had its first confirmed cases of locally acquired malaria in 20 years. With changes in climate leading to changes in tropical diseases, it is imperative to stay ahead of the most up-to-date treatment recommendations worldwide. In June of 2023, a group of medical students from Oklahoma State College of Osteopathic Medicine traveled to Malawi, Africa to work at Child Legacy International Hospital. There, students observed the tremendous threat malaria poses to the health and well-being of pregnant women and newborns. A literature review was conducted of the guidelines from the American College of Gynecology, the ACOG, the World Health Organization, the WHO, the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, the Infectious Disease Society of America, the IDSA, the American Academy of Pediatrics, the AAP, and the Government of Malawi Ministry of Health, the MMH, for the treatment of active malarial infection in pregnancy. Recommendations were compared and contrasted. The objective of this research was to compare the most up-to-date recommendations for the treatment of malaria in pregnancy in different parts of the world. We aim to identify discrepancies between the guidelines of various sources and countries, as well as identify which ones were the most up-to-date and comprehensive. Lastly, we wanted to determine which sources lacked the newest guidelines for treatment. Table 1, Recommended Treatment of P. falciparum Malaria in Pregnancy Based on Societal Guidelines, displays the treatment for P. falciparum Malaria in Pregnancy for all entities discussed in this study. Similarities between the WHO and CDC are observed. It is also notable that both the ACOG and the IDSA lack current guidelines, and the AAP guidelines are considered incomplete in comparison to that of the WHO and CDC. The MMH still uses out-of-date guidelines, therefore they are inconsistent with that of the WHO and CDC. Figure 1, Treatment of Malaria in Pregnancy, compares first-line treatment recommendations between the WHO and MMH, which are dependent upon the severity of infection, infecting species of mosquito, and trimester of pregnancy. The MMH does not discriminate between treatments due to the fact that over 98% of malaria cases in this country are caused by P. falciparum. In conclusion, we found that the use of prompt and effective antimalarial treatment has proven advantageous for promoting the most optimal health outcomes for the mother, fetus, and neonate. Currently, the MMH is using out-of-date guidelines, the AAP provides incomplete guidelines, and the ACOG and ISDA have notably absent guidelines. In contrast, the CDC and WHO provide the most complete, detailed, and current guidelines. In November of 2022, the WHO updated its guidelines to define artemether lumefantrine as the preferred treatment option for uncomplicated P. falciparum malaria in the first trimester, with the CDC following suit shortly after. This came after studies revealed no evidence of teratogenicity or embryotoxicity based on risk of miscarriage, stillbirth, or major congenital anomalies linked to artemisinin-based therapies in the first trimester. It is imperative that all entities have up-to-date guidelines for treatment of malaria in pregnancy that are congruent with the severity of infection, infecting species of mosquito, and trimester of pregnancy. Therefore, we recommend that the MMH update their guidelines based on the WHO and CDCs, and that all American societies adapt the current WHO and CDC guidelines. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my presentation today, and for any further questions, you may contact me at marjorie.rooney at okstate.edu. Thank you.